Thanksgiving is more than a holiday. It is a lifestyle to be lived. And when you realize, when you can grab hold of that concept, when you can start living it, your whole life will change. But it takes practice. Now let me talk about Thanksgiving, the holiday, for a moment. It takes 18 hours to prepare a made-from-scratch meal to be consumed by your family on Thanksgiving Day. That meal that took 18 hours to prepare, it takes 20 minutes to consume, and it is usually during halftime of the game. An ordinary day, including Thanksgiving Day, it has 86,400 seconds. The average family that is faith-based in America spends a total of three minutes in prayer on Thanksgiving, giving thanks to God. That is 180 seconds of that day remembering our blessings, decreeing it with our mouth. What would we have if we did it more? I say that we would have a heaven on earth instead of a hellish environment. We have to remind ourselves of our blessings. We remind ourselves all the time of what isn't right, of our problems and our challenges. Hebrews 12, 28 and 29 says this. It says, therefore, since we receive a kingdom which can't be shaken. Now, let me take that Bible quote apart. We've already received the kingdom. You have the kingdom. You're a child of God. You were given the kingdom in the beginning. You have it now. Everyone has it now, whether they are aware of it or not. A lot of people are blind to it because they're so looking, using their eyes to look to the appearances, as Jesus talked about. The appearances, as he was talking about, are the problems, the mountains of difficulty. We've all got them. But it depends on how much we focus on them, on whether our life is a heaven or a hellish environment. Now, it says, since we received the kingdom, that's a fact, we have received it. Now it goes on, which can't be shaken. This is an old, old first century Christianity saying that it's solid, it's there, it's unchangeable. It can't be shaken, it can't be divided, it can't be removed. You have it in its entirety. Now it goes on, it says, let us show gratitude by which we may offer to God an acceptable service. And how do we offer God an acceptable service in our 24 hours, 86,400 seconds that we have? How do we give God an acceptable service? How do we follow Jesus Christ in that time period? We do it with reverence and awe. Now, the last part of the Bible verse, for our God is a consuming fire. Over time, this statement has been lost to humanity. An all-consuming fire, the only thing that we have for it in today's language is when you're on fire with something. You're filled with enthusiasm. You're filled with passion for what you're doing. You are literally being consumed in a good way by the things you're doing. It is what happens to you when you live in gratitude. Thanksgiving is a word of action. 
It is a word where you take the action of thanksgiving in the morning and you live it all day long. Thanksgiving was never meant to be shut up in a single day. Religion, the word, means a way of life. But how do you live your life? And is it working for you in living your life a certain way? Seneca said, nothing is more honorable than a grateful heart. True gratitude is possible for those who take time to remember. No one can give thanks that has a short memory. Church is a remembrance society. You are here to remember and recall that that you already know. And when you hear something that you already know, you go, hmm, that's right. Your whole soul is saying, yes, that's right. I remember that. That's what I need to recall daily. Let me tell you my story. In the mid-1970s, I gave my life to God in Nashville, Tennessee. And I was very sincere. I wanted to live every day of my life making other people's lives better. In Nashville, it's not that things weren't going good, but I had a crisis of spirit. It was an empty existence. I, I needed more. I realized, thank God, at a very young age, that that I could do more with this life that has been given to me by God. Now, a crisis of spirit is a good thing. It's not a bad thing. Yes, it appears bad at the moment. You get caught up in the hurricanes of life, and you're being twirled around, and you don't know which way is up. But if it changes you, if it sends you in another direction, if you pause during that time and listen to God, then you'll be led in the way that you need to go. In 1978, I went to seminary, but I spent the first three years learning the basics on becoming a teacher, on how to change people's lives. In 1981, I entered ministerial school to become an ordained minister. In 1983, I had my first church as a minister in Rockford, Illinois. I would do what they said to do in ministerial school. I would go into a church and I'd speak for 20 minutes. And I'd do not more, they said, than seven minutes of prayer. But I found over time, I wasn't really changing lives. Oh, I might entertain people, I might be able to hold their attention, but people remained the same, even though they wanted to change in a sincere way. So, what I did was I lengthened the lesson. I spoke for 30 minutes plus. I did meditations and prayers that were 11 to 15 minutes. And I didn't change lives either. I noticed people were nodding off. In counseling sessions, I made a discovery that a person coming in for counseling with a huge problem that really wanted to change, my counseling sessions, again, made them feel better in the moment, but they didn't change until I gave them a system based on the calendar that took place after the counseling session. I'd say, for the next seven days, go home and practice this every day. And I noticed there was a change in the person. Then I heard a psychologist on TV, and he said this. He said, it takes 14 days to release an impacted idea within the subconscious mind. You work on something, and over a 14-day period, you begin to chip away at the cement. You cause a crack, and then light can come in and change that. Well, I thought, I'm on to something here. 
And I started to give people assignments for 14 days, and bigger changes happened in their lives. In the 1980s, there was a minister in Detroit, Michigan, by the name of Jack Boland. He was a friend of mine. Thank goodness, he me as a young minister. And he had a very successful year-long system called the Mastermind. It was a huge journal, literally about the size of this, that you would carry with you, and nightly or when you had time, you would journal in that your thoughts. He noticed, and I noticed, watching his folks, that they were making real changes in their lives, uh, lasting changes, changes that totally revolutionized the people that were doing it. And I thought, over time, and I prayed, I wanted a way to help people more. In Rockford, Illinois, in 1984, I formed a separate ministry called Positive Christianity. Positive Christianity first put out a newspaper. This was an all-labor-consuming thing where I would go to one of the local newspapers, hire them, and they would put out a newspaper, usually quarterly, and then we would give it away free. Here was my idea. I can only reach so many people. So many people relate to me. Now, you might have a, a woman up here that would relate to other folks that I could never relate to. Another young man. And I saw this, and I thought, if there could be a way to gather many people with one writing, and so I filled it with about 15 or 16 different ministers of all shapes and sizes, male and female, on the hopes, again, that we could change people, that we could make a real difference in a person's life. On Sunday morning, you dress, you brush your teeth, you do everything you need to do, and then you make the drive to come here. I don't want that to be a useless exercise. I want you to really get something for making the effort. And that has always been my dream. I noticed that Jesus told stories, and so I started to tell stories in my talks. And I'll tell you why I did this. Because there was a woman one time, wonderful woman, I'll call her Marcella. Marcella and I went out to lunch one day in the early 80s, and I was just curious. I, she was going on and on about how much she enjoyed the Sunday talk and making comments about it. And as I'm listening, I'm thinking, well, I didn't say anything like that. What is she talking about? She'd say something like, when you said the pink pony was riding through the meadow, and I would think, well, wait a minute. I didn't mention a pink pony, and I didn't mention a meadow. And then finally I said to Marcella, I said, Marcella, what did I talk about on Sunday? And she said, well, you know, it was sure good. And I said, no. I said, specifically, what did I talk about? Well, she hemmed and hawed, and that dear, wonderful soul couldn't mention one thing other than the feeling she had when she was sitting there. And so I started to tell stories on the hope that people would latch on to the story, the tagline of what I was really trying to, to teach and to get across. And that worked. Well, I got a fairly large ministry because of the success of the Good Life newspaper of Positive Christianity, and I continued to tell stories. But I continued to notice how people would come, hopefully in ever-increasing numbers, but their lives weren't changed that much. Matter of fact, I had an occasion in the last 10 years to go out to dinner with a lady like Marcella, and she was telling me her problems during the dinner. They were the same problems that she had 30 years ago. 
different faces, different environments. But this poor dear soul, this saint of a woman, was still locked in the circle of her problems. She was still experiencing the same thing. And I started to really pray, and I said, what will really change people at depth? Well, it started to come to me that it was thanksgiving instead of complaining. It was where a person focuses on the good of God instead of what's wrong, about not being blinded to appearance. When they did that, things started to happen. And when they did that, more than just 14 days. I started to see people that were severely depressed, that had had problems for decades, being lifted out and permanently changed through a practice of a higher way of life a higher way of perception, and it was calendar-based. Everything I do now is calendar-based. Positive daily inspiration comes to you daily. It has a different date on it. It's calendar-based. But you need more. You need more than just positive daily inspiration. You need something to work on during the daytime. Well, people that come to my seminars, they like them so much. But if you come to one of my seminars and listen to the morning lesson and spend the up to four hours in the afternoon at one of my seminars, it won't change you one iota unless you work it. The success of my seminars have been what happens after the seminar is over. And then there is a 30-day period where morning, noon, and night with all the different things that you do you do it, and if you do it, you're never the same. My friend, Johnny Coleman from Chicago, said this, It works if you work it. See, that's the key. This is the life experience of individual responsibility. I wish more than anything in the world that I had the God-given gift to touch a person and change their life. I have always wanted that. As much as I've wanted it, I don't have it. The individual, because we have free will, has to do it for herself or himself. You have to say yes, but it's not enough saying yes you have to be willing to change the impacted ideas about who you think you are at the deepest levels of you. And that sometimes takes a chipping away at yourself. There is a Native American saying that says, give thanks continually and you will know God. And it goes on, it says, give thanks for unknown blessings already on their way. If you reread the Jesus teachings, he always gave thanks in advance. It is the highest form of energy. It is an exalted energy, a joyful energy. Many times when you practice what we're going to learn to practice today, you'll have euphoria come through you. Heaviness of heart is transformed, that is my prayer for you, into a feeling of real relief. Because in that moment of time, you have an instantaneous connection with God. Nothing keeps your soul so alive as a continuous state of thanksgiving. Now, I've had people say to me, well, <laughs> Chris... That's fine, but I don't have much to give thanks for. I'm going to wait. I would love to spend a day in Thanksgiving, but I'm going to wait till things get better. Actually, that type of attitude, a subtle complaining inside of self, has the power to repel 
instead of retra attract our blessings. When we begin to form a thanksgiving, when we're grateful to God for what has been and what will be, we have a mature spirituality that changes us cell by cell and changes our life into a heaven instead of a hell. You become a spiritual magnet for the good that you want in your life. It is a new way of life. The basic Christianity way of life. The basic faith-based way of life. It is a gratitude lifestyle. Thankfulness for the fire that is in you. Thankfulness for your attitude. Let me tell you what W.J. Cameron said one time. He said, it's literally true. As the thankless say that they have nothing to be thankful for, he who sits by a fire, thankless for the fire, is just as if he had no fire. Nothing is possessed save in appreciation. When you appreciate something, you not only attract it to you, but you have it spiritually. Faith-based life is based on perception. I'm going to show you what I've done. I have yearly a gratitude calendar that comes in a special envelope that is to get the attention of the person receiving it and for my calendar what I've done is I have it in a pocket size edition now so that you can carry it with you so when you see something that you want to say I am thankful for you can write it down immediately you don't wait till you get home you can recall it and when you recall it, that is the power of the remembrance. Powerful activity of striving for an up arrow day. This, in a condensed form, was from watching people over 30 years. Where they would have a down day and then they'd have an up day. And I want you to record your up days and your down days so that you can retrain your mind. So, gee, yesterday I didn't do as well. I'm going to work harder. It is just calling your attention to it. That is the first thing you can do towards a solution. The next thing you do, point number two, is every day I ask you to make an appointment with God for prayer. But this is special kind of prayer, Thanksgiving prayer. You write down an appointment just as if I had an appointment with you. I can write down 10 a.m. and I show up, and when you show up, God shows up. All you have to do is spend this time in thanksgiving to God. It's not asking for something, which 98% of our prayer is and that's okay but this is for giving gratitude giving thanks for what is right in your life so many people use their prayer time just to go over their problems a litany of problems and how bad they feel my friends listen to this if you feel worse after you prayed than before you prayed perhaps you're doing it wrong when you spend time in thanksgiving prayer, going over your blessings, and you'll have many to go over as you work the calendar, you will have a euphoria lift inside of you that has an effect to change the next few hours of your life. Point number three, count your blessings. Write them down daily every day on the lines of the calendar and let me talk about the calendar for a minute I am not in ministry to sell calendars you can buy your own calendar P 
People watching this TV can buy their own calendar. They don't need ours. But if they want to get ours, it's available for, for a while. But you can start anytime. Even if you're watching this in March, you might think, and I've had people say this in the past, gee, I missed that. Why, if I would have done that back then, my whole life, you start where you are and begin this process. Every day, write down at least five or six wonderful things that you have to be thankful for. You can write them down with one or two words as long as it helps you recall the next time you're in Thanksgiving prayer. Then you review weekly. This is a time where you will be overwhelmed at times. You'll have tears. I've had the, the toughest men tell me that they had tears running down their cheeks where they didn't realize until they saw the accumulative effect of all the blessings how much God was in their life. You review that weekly, then you review it monthly going over every blessing, and you review it yearly. Thanksgiving 2013 will be a life-changing event. You will spend your entire day in Thanksgiving prayer going over the blessings of what God has done. You will be thankful for your life. Most people, most people are not. Most people are living more in their problems than in their bliss. Most people are so consumed and blinded by their problems that they're frozen like a deer on the railroad tracks. And they wonder, they pray, they beg, when will it get better? It won't get better until you choose to make it better in your free will. And then, as you begin to transform yourself literally from the inside out, your whole life will change. So will your relationships, my friends, because you'll be a new woman and a new man. Everything will be new. You will be thankful for every area of your life but you're also going to be thankful for a biggie. You're going to be thankful for you. Most people are not. They stand in front of the mirror and they begin to pick themselves apart. In their imagination about themselves, they have become an expert on what they're not good at, what they're missing in life, their defects. I want you to become a master, a specialist on what you're good at and promote it inside of you and give thanks for it. And as you're thankful for the gifts that you already have, more gifts will be given to you. Next, point number nine, I ask you to be thankful for other people constantly. Most people aren't. Most people walk through their days making snap judgments, critical judgments, of other people. I want you to be a faith-based person that is a person that has high faith in God working through another person, even when they appear disagreeable to you in the moment. I want you to be so thankful for what they do. Some of the greatest people in our lives have been bad role models because they pointed us in the right direction. We can look and we can say, gee, I don't want to do that. Sometimes our greatest lessons come from people that, that have not been too pleasant in the moment. Sometimes it takes years and years and years and years looking back. Just ask anyone that's in the army or has been in the army that served in the armed forces that hated their drill sergeant. 
And years go by and they say, you know, that was one of the greatest people that I've ever known because they got me moving. Well, may you say the same thing about me. May I be a spiritual drill sergeant for you right now. Next, you do thanksgiving. I want you to overflow from your faith. I want you to give to others. And I want you to record your giving. I'm not talking about finances. I'm talking about how you can give your ear to another person, give your smile, give your helping hand, get involved with things that help other people. I want you to be a giving person because you have the foundation of realizing what God has done for you. I want you to use God coming through you to help another person. And if you do, you'll probably have no idea the good that you do with your life. And truly, it is one of your purposes and why you're here. Number 11, praise only. Every day that you are able to go through an entire day without criticizing once anyone or anything, including yourself, Draw a star next to the date that you succeed. It's a simple system. I've worked hard over the 11 years that I've been doing this to make it simpler so that you can take this home today and you can use it. Go and, and buy a calendar. If you want, you can order one of ours. But have it small enough where you can carry it with you and record your blessings. Record all the good that God has and is and will do in your life.